So in this video, I'm going to show you how to warp your hoop. Um, so warping is essentially wrapping the um, the yarn or the threads through which you're going to weave your other yarn and fabrics. So with an embroidery hoop, you have this little mechanism at the top here, which you unscrew to loosen the outer hoop. I'll just unscrew that, just enough so that that lifts off. So you can put the outer hoop to one side. And what we're going to be doing is wrapping the uh, thread or yarn that came on a little piece of card in your kit. We're going to be wrapping that around. Um, always recommend um, measuring out and wrapping out your wrapping the yarn around something small like this, um, rather than starting with a, a ball of yarn and trying to wrap round because as you get round towards the end as you'll see the gaps for you to squeeze your yarn in and out um, will get smaller and smaller so you do want like a little bobbin or something that you can use and this little bit of card is perfect really um, just so that you can fit it in between the gaps so we're going to unravel a little bit of yarn to begin with and we're simply going to tie it to the hoop anywhere around the edge. I'm just going to do that twice to keep it secure. There we go. You can leave that little bit dangling because that will get lost and hidden underneath the weaving itself. Okay, so um, you're going to basically pull the yarn down centrally to the other side and I just tend to press my thumb on there to keep it in place so that my other hand is free to work with this. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to go under and over all the way around. So we're going to be at about one inch intervals so once you get it to the other side, then I just swap my hand up to the top and hold it in place. And then with your bobbin, you're going to come under through the middle. And we're going to work sort of anti-clockwise, no, sorry, clockwise that way and clockwise this way with where we place the yarn so you're going to go over once you've got it down to the bottom there about an inch away you swap your hand use your thumb to hold the yarn in place and then this one goes under and over the top there so unraveling a bit more yarn coming under over to this side and holding that in place with my finger and you're just going to continue so going under and through and then around the top there you can adjust the positioning of these as you go later So don't worry if they're not exact in their spacing. Under and over. If it helps to turn the hoop round as you go to, so that you're always holding your finger at the same place you can do that too. So with this we're going under and through to the side. Can you see these holes are getting narrower as we go? Under and over. Under and through. you'll notice that this is looking a bit messy in the middle here but we're going to pull all of that together in a moment 
and we've been all the way around. Should have unraveled that a little bit first. there I think we can probably squeeze another couple let's see how this looks oh no I think we're pretty much there so we're going to come under there and the last one's going to come through here and there we have it. So it's just literally under over under over until you've been round the whole circle. Now you can see any ones that are looking a little bit like they could be adjusted so they're evenly spaced you can do that now. And the next thing we're going to do is if you place your finger just to hold the yarn in place on the very last one that you um, wound around just so that you don't lose your spot there and then you're going to bring your little bobbin underneath and then you're going to basically poke it through in between um, two strands two warps and you're going to pull it down and can you see it's starting to pull those um, threads together in the middle then if we turn it around, again, we're going to, I'm just going to readjust those. We're going to poke this back through on the other side so that we're essentially wrapping tightly around the centre and then pulling. And can you see how that's tightened that again? So we've, we've basically wrapped it around in a vertical through here, back through here and tied it this way. And now if we turn it 90 degrees, we're going to do exactly the same. So we're going to pop it up through the middle and then opposite down there. And that just does the job of pulling together all the threads as centrally as possible. And once that's done, it's looking nice and neat. You're going to pull your thread out to the edge of the... Um, hoop and then you're going to snip off the yarn and we're going to do another tie around the top just to keep that in place going to do it a couple of times because you don't want that to come loose. There we go. So that is your warped hoop ready for weaving. So in this video we're going to look at the tabby weave stitch which is one of the simplest I think because it's simply weaving under and over, under and over your warp threads. So um, I haven't included any needles in your kit because the yarns are quite thick and they're a bit, a bit unruly and um, I find that on a small uh, loom like this that you've created the needle isn't actually that useful. If you're working on a very large a rectangular loom and you were weaving through many many threads across a wide span then using a weaving um, needle tool is a great idea because you want to basically be traveling and, and covering more ground more quickly um, 
but what you can do if you want to is get a paper clip and just attach it to the end of um, yarn that's about this thick this is t-shirt yarn um, just literally poke it through the end of a paper clip and that will help if you want a bit of additional support um, guiding your thread through the warps so to do a tabby weave you're basically going under and over and when I say under and over you're going under both both warp threads um, that you see there so you were not going in between in this gap the gap is actually quite handy for hiding the ends and weaving the ends in at the end so you're going under and over under and over like that I'll just do a couple more And then all you do is you work back in the opposite direction. So over and under, over and under. And what the effect you get with this is that you can actually see the warp thread. So as with these kits where you've got a different color warp thread, um, it now becomes part of your design because you get to see the color of it against the yarn that you're working with. So you can do um, little stretches of tabby weave like this and they don't have to be perfectly even the beauty of of weaving on a circular um, loom in fact any any loom is that you can create a design that is a bit more organic so it doesn't have to be so ge geometrical um, so I can finish that one there and then come back under over and then hide the rest so I've just filled in a little shape there and then you can go you can either if you wanted to uh, push this all the way down into the center now to create a more of a bumpy design or keep it where it was where it's flattened out and you can see your warp threads a bit more obviously but it's a great little filler to use the tabby weave to fill in the gaps um, in between the larger yarns. Okay. The next stitch I'm going to show you is the sumac stitch. And this has the um, effect of looking like a braid um, going round the, the weave. So what I'd recommend with, especially with the um, giant unspun yarns or roving is that you split in two because it's just too thick particularly on this very small loom if you're working on a very large loom you could probably keep it the same thickness if you wanted to um, so sumac basically what you're doing is you wrap the end just wrap it under and you could actually tuck it and through the middle of the next warp threads in the row. And then what you're doing is you, you jump over a couple of warp, warp threads. Weave down after you've jumped over a few and then you pull up under one. And that's your first stitch and then you I jumped over three there so I'm going to jump over one two three I'm going to go in there and then come up after just under one at the end and pull so we're creating one half of a braid at the moment then we're going to jump over three poke the roving through and then come back so reversing under that last warp thread like that and then coming back the other way we start under there just poked it under to come to reverse We'll turn it around this way so we're going 
jumping over three and coming up one jumping over three one two three and coming up under one and you can see it's starting to create that beautiful braid and you would continue on like, like that if you want to do a really long one then you would use one half of this length to just do one half one side of the braid and then use the other half to come back So next I want to sh show you something called the Raya Knot. So what you'll need is, um, you can do this with any, any yarn at all, but what I'm going to use here for this example is some macrame cord, um, because I want to show you that you, once you've tied the knot, you can then create a little fringe with um, the yarn. So. I want my little fringe to be about two inches long so I'm going to cut um, my I'm going to fold it to that length and then cut so a raya knot essentially works around two warp threads so you're going to basically take the yarn around one end of the yarn around one warp thread and you're going to take the other side under the next door warp thread like that and then you're simply going to take the loop and the two ends and put the two ends through the loop and pull like that so you've got that nice bar across the top there and then you've got these bits here which can now be fringed so to fringe um, macrame cord you literally untwist it and you'll see that it's made up of more threads inside there so you just do that first job of undoing those threads I mean actually these are even quite nice just as they are but you can take it a step further and each one of these that you've unraveled will split into even more. So you can get a comb. You can just use your fingers to spread all the threads out. But I think a macrame fringe does make a really, really nice accent. And just another another little aspect of your weave to draw the eye in. There we go. So you can have that trailing over the top. Like that. You could cut it short as well. Have a shorter fringe. Depends how you're going to build up your design. So I want to show you something else you can do with t-shirt yarn um, which is gives a quite a fun effect I think and that's to to just literally tie knots with it so I like to cut it into little strands maybe three or four inches long and then choose a spot where I want to create a bit of a fringy effect and I'm literally just going to tie tie them around like that you can either tie once or twice and you can sort of shove them closer to each other so they start to bunch up and you can twist the knots around a little bit but it just gives a little bit of texture Let's put a third one on that same warp, I think. You can build up 
that little fringe. It's kind of a little bit haphazard. And you can trim them shorter if you want to, um, especially if you bunch them up close to something else and then weave around the edge on the other side of them. Then they kind of poke out, creating a little sort of punctuation of texture there in the middle. Um, so you could weave something around the bottom edge here. I would probably put a few more on there actually. Um, but they're just a fun little sort of a different thing that grabs the, the eye's attention as you're looking at the weave. So there's a couple more things I'd like to show you about how you can use roving. So if you do keep it intact, the same width that it comes and you don't split it, um, a really cool effect can be achieved by popping it underneath and literally poking it through the threads in between. So you're not actually weaving it under and over, but you're just pulling up. chunks of it like that um, it's quite nice around the edge you can actually slide it down to the middle as well that's actually quite cool as well um, but it means that you can adjust how fluffy or poofy those sections are which is quite interest makes it quite interesting and just again the aim of the game really is to just be changing your the size and the texture of the loops and materials that you're using to create a really interesting mixture of textures. Um, another thing you can do is if you have a smaller, um, not quite so thick um, length of roving, and don't forget you can, you can split this into any thickness that you like. You can go half, you can go Quarter. You could even split it even further if you wanted to play around with um, making some stitches with an even skinnier piece. Um, but ultimately, it's a case of, I'm just going to start by just poking it under in between the two layers there of warp threads. Um, and you're literally, a bit like the sumac stitch, you're just going over one each time though so it kind of forms a much smaller stitch so rather than jumping over two or three just going over one so you go over one and under And you can do this without necessarily going, coming back the other side to do the other half of a braid. You can just go round as it is like that. So as you can see, we're building up different layers, different heights, different textures. I'm going to go with a very narrow piece here now. And I'm just going to do a little tabby weave. On this section here. And of course you've got the option, if you want to, of actually leaving some of the warp threads exposed. Um, you don't have to fill the entire thing up. can actually be quite pretty to leave some of them exposed as part of your design. So you can see that actually tabby weaving with um, a thinner length of roving can actually be quite nice, make a nice effect there. I'm going to come back one more row. There we go. So 
So um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to manage what's going on on the other side, which doesn't look half as pretty. Um, as we've seen with some of these yarns, when you're starting off, you can poke them underneath this central kind of gap between the warp threads like that. And actually that is pretty much um, the best place for them, it's particularly at the back, you want to sort of find, see this bit of blue here, I'm aiming to find a spot nearby where I can just tuck that in. And you might want to use scissors just to help you find a way through. It's not going to be absolutely perfect at the back, but what you want is just for everything to be secure. Because if this is going on a wall, um, you're not going to ever really see the back. But you just want it to be tidy and secure so it's not going to go anywhere. I have seen uh, some people choose to take a piece of card and cut it to the circle size. Um, that is if you've woven right up to the edges so you can't see the card from the other side. Um, and then simply use a glue gun and stick that piece of card to the back. Obviously that's a bit tricky when the surface at the back is quite undulating. So my preference is to leave it as it is, um, but depends how how much you feel strongly about it being super tidy at the back, even though you can't see it. Only you know what it looks like. Okay. So starting out with one of these kits can be a little bit daunting because you've got lots of yarns um, and essentially a blank canvas other than the example on the photo of the kit. So um, where would you begin? Well, I would suggest taking all of the different yarns that you have to begin with and just seeing how how you feel that they look next to each other. So. You know, would you, do you feel like these two colours look quite nice next to each other? Or do you feel that perhaps the greys look better next to each other? Or do you feel as though you'd like... You have to start thinking about the, the kind of overall... Do you want sort of like a puffy, poofy type style like this? Or do you want a much sort of simpler, tidy... Um, neat and low profile weave it's very very subjective and what you create is going to be 100% unique to you so it's really a, it's a quite an intuitive process actually when I start weaving I don't actually have a plan other than I know which things I like sitting next to each other and then what I do when I've done I might get this far in a design and say, hmm, what does it need? I think it needs a bit more of a fringy thing over here to balance out the fringe on this side. Or maybe it needs a bit more blue over here to balance out. I often find that if you've used a colour or a type of material on one side of your design, it's nice to echo it somewhere else. So if I've got a bit of uh, macrame fringe here, I might try and use this, maybe do a little bit of tabby weaving over on this side to echo the colour and the material on the other side. And certainly with the um, t-shirt yarn, I would aim probably to do a bit of tabby weaving around the edge here, even if it was very, very uh, subtle. Or I might decide to wrap around the hoop. Um, with the t-shirt yarn just wrap it so that there's just a little echo on the other side 